Okay, YouTube friends and family, those who are new to my channel and those who've been around for a while, thank you for your support, for your words of encouragement, for your comments in the comment section. Some of them are absolutely hilarious, some of them are not so clever. Um, so thank you all for your comments, I really appreciate it. I, I appreciate also the fact that I'm getting lots of inbox messages now from people who are encouraging me to continue doing the videos. I want to make a few points. First of all, you know, you see my face on camera and I've got all these opinions. I've got these opinions about fighters, whether it be Yama Khan, David Hay, um, Derek Chisora, uh, Kel Brook. And it, I may come across as somebody who doesn't like British fighters. That's not true. But I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. I won't go into too much detail. Look, I, I used to box as an amateur. I was uh, fortunate enough as an amateur to... I wanted to test myself. And I went to America and I trained with one of the... A, a good um, professional, a good amateur trainer at the time. And he'd had a, a gym for guys at the time as amateurs. And he used them, and all four of them went on to become a national champion at different weights. So, Golden Gloves. So, you know, that's what I wanted to do. That's where I wanted to take my career as an amateur. I wanted to learn because I didn't think, you know, uh, double left jab, one right hand was the, was the way for me to learn. I, I wasn't a big fan of it. I didn't like the style. Um, and um, I was inspired by Sugar Ray Robinson because Sugar Ray Robinson for me is the greatest fighter of all time. That's my opinion. Everyone will argue differently. But Sugar Ray Robinson for me, people say, well, why do you like Sugar Ray Robinson? I love Sugar Ray Robinson because Sugar Ray Robinson could throw punches going forward. He could throw punches going backward. Okay. You know, he can move from, so he had lateral movement. Four people start talking about lateral movement. Um, Sugar Ray Robinson, you know, he could box. He could punch. He could slug with you. You know, he didn't have stamina problems. He had a great chin, you know. He, he fought the best of his time over and over again. You know, um, dream for me, Sugar Ray Robinson. It's just a shame that when he went up to the heavyweight division, I think it was he went up to the heavyweight division, or was it the light heavyweight division? He went up to the heavyweight division. Or was it the light heavyweight? And he wanted to fight that dream fight with Floyd Patterson, but I think he got beaten by dehydration and all the rest of it. But for me, the fights with Lamotta, um, you know, I saw one fight in particular where Robinson was going backwards, he knocked a guy out going backwards. You know, to be able to throw punches going backwards um, and knocking a guy is amazing. The, the 15 punch combination I've seen throw, um, unanswered punches. Um, you could just go all through, go through all Sugar Ray Robinson fights and you, you could, blurring hand speed. You know, you talk about Roy Johnson, his blurring hand speed, but this guy could do it all. This guy could do it all. And I, you know, I never thought I'd ever be someone like Sugar Ray Robinson, but you know, you, 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 you set yourself standards high. You know, you, you hope that you can get close to that, that individual. Um, so that's what it was, and I was fortunate as well. Um, I got offered a professional contract with uh, Ronnie Rush um, in Wales. Barry Jones, who was at the time the super featherweight champion, um, and he just he'd come out of retirement because he had a brain scan. Um, I think the British Boxing Board of Control stopped him from boxing, got his license back, and he was going to fight the uh, Defratus. Um, for the title, I think he may have been WBO champion at the time, and um, yeah, so it was around that time that I I was I was going to get into boxing, and turn pro, and everything, and there were high hopes for me. Um, my trainer was going to take me slowly through the pro ranks. Um, his belief was that um, to fight through the pro ranks slowly and learn your pro game that way was better than fighting 150 amateur fights. I don't know. In hindsight, maybe. You know, who would like to argue with him at the time? I was young. Um, maybe I would have gone through having more amateur fights and stuff, but who knows? I can tell you about my amateur career at an, in another day and uh, another time. If you ask, I'll tell you. Um, yeah, I had two guys turn up to my first amateur bat actually. Uh, Gordon Banks was a former England goalkeeper, and at that time, Ian Napper, who's the bantamweight flyweight champion, Great Britain, um, watched my first. Watch it was his last amateur bout. Um, going into pros as my first amateur bout and he came up to me and said boy you're only your first amateur bout and you're punching like that and you're moving like that so where did you get all them skills from so anyway I'll, I'll tell you guys about it another time I'm just talking now but um, stuff but um, the reason why I decided to do this video tonight was 
simply because you just you give you a bit more of an idea of where I'm coming from as a as a, as a, as a pundit or as a as a I don't know a fan. Um, I can no, no longer call myself an armchair fan. Um, we'll go into that in a minute, but um, just um, why you know if I look at Sugar Ray Robinson as the greatest fighter of all time for me. Um, I like to see guys who are versatile. I like to see guys who can box. I like to see guys who can punch. I like to see guys who can move back and forward, side to side, work on the inside. You know, to turn, spin a guy around, block punches. You know, I'm not a big fan of guys who's got the chin up in the air and taking a whole heap of punches. Um, but I do like exciting fighters. Um, uh, memorable fights for me. Um, Evander Holyfield against Burt Cooper. You watch it in the second round. Burt Cooper, or third round, Burt Cooper tags Holyfield with a punch and Holyfield's all over the place. And, you know, on the verge of being knocked out and he comes back in the fight. Or, you know, Eric Morales and Barrero, or Gatti Ward. Real wars. Um... Gosh, Holyfield, Bow. I was, I was, I loved Holyfield as well. I was one of the fighters. I like fighters who got big heart. I mean, Holyfield took up a whole heap of punches, but he was an exciting fighter. So it's slightly contradictory what I'm saying. But Holyfield's a fighter I loved a lot. Yep, loved Roy Jones Jr. You know, Roy Jones is peak. Michael Nunn wasn't a big James Tony fan to be honest. I, I didn't like him personally. I liked Mike McCallum, the body snatcher. Chris Eubank, British fighter. Chris Eubank, Nigel Benn. Michael Watson, um, Lennox Lewis, of course. Um, Naz, I think, was the greatest British entity boxing entertainer. And while I'm on the point of talking about British fighters, where have all the personalities gone? Where, where have they all gone? We've got guys in this country who can box, who can fight a bit, you know, some of the considerings of big punches, but they've got no personality. We've got absolutely zero personality, our fighters coming through. You know, David Hay. Uh, you know, he's done a lot for the division, a lot of it's talk, but you know, he's the one who sells tickets. You know, Carl Frotch is our next fighter who talks a bit, backs it up. You call him a personality because the way he talks, and a lot of credit for Carl Frotch as well as Hay in terms of what they do in their personalities. But coming through the ranks now, in terms of personalities, is nobody. I mean, you, Naz was great that, in terms of what he did at the time. You know, the way he'd come in with you know, the flying carpets, all you know, all the. Alden Razamataz and he went in there and he delivered nine times at a turn. He didn't against Barrera, but I think had he prepared against Barrera, it would be a different fight. But there you go. So, you know, when I'm looking at fighters generally, I like to see a guy who's got, if I can, um, if he's not an exciting style, it's bringing it all the time. Oh, I forgot to bring mention Ricky Hatton. I do like Ricky Hatton. Today, for me, the best fighter around today, whilst at times he might not be exciting, Floyd Mayweather. I think he's a complete package, can fight on the inside, can fight on the outside, counter punches beautifully, superb defense, um, doesn't get hit often, very clever. Um, so yeah, my Floyd Mayweather, that's where I stand. Um, people will say, well, do you like Pacquiao? Yeah, I like Pacquiao, but I don't think, um, I don't, I, where I lose respect for Pacquiao is where he's had fights at catch weights and got people to lose weight and come in at ridiculous weights like when he put Oscar De La Hoya for Oscar De La Hoya that 140 140 245 pound we could go into debate about this all day long and you know if somebody doesn't ask me to do a video about it I will do but um Pacquiao is a good fighter exciting but uh, zero personality to be honest um but good fighter but, you know I won't call him great I'll call him good uh of course gotta mention Sugar Ray Leonard Marvin Hagler Thomas Hearns Roberto Duran, you've got to mention them, so of course, love them too. Um, so those are the sort of guys that I've sort of looked at and, you know, and I learned a lot, I guess, in terms of when I was in America, I learned a lot in terms of what the trainers you look for. The trainers used to say to me, or trainers used to say to me all the time, if you've got a fighter who's a very good fighter, or is, they talk about, the promoters talk about him being a very good fighter, take a very good look at his opposition. You look at a guy that's got a record of 30 and 0, but he's not fought a big puncher. Ask yourself the question why. Usually, they, it's in the gym. The promoters or the management see something, um, gets exposed. Maybe they get a sparring partner in who they expect to walk through, and maybe they, you know, they look really bad. And not over one occasion, two, three occasions, where they get knocked out cold in sparring, it's kept very quiet. 
and that fight is sort of exposed in that way and they keep it very quiet but you know it's, it's in their best interest to keep that fighter um, active and uh, profitable to keep them away from certain fights so uh, this is something my tra trainer said to me a lot and uh, I guess that's why when the Kelbrook fight was announced with Carl, um, Carson Jones I was um, I, I really did lean towards Carson Jones because up to the point of you know the Carson Jones fight Kel Brook had never fought anybody really that I thought that was going to put it on him like Carson Jones did and you know I wasn't far from my prediction as I said in my video um, I thought Carson Jones was going to win because I thought he was going to hustle him I think that they've seen something in the gym um, back at some point of Kel Brook it's, like, like it's just a hunch that they saw something which has made his career sort of stall Kel Brook's been around a while and you know my trainee will say let them off the leash if they're really that good and he, you know at, at the opposite of that is something like Lennox Lewis if you look at Lennox Lewis's career you know he was on his 14th 15th fight he's fighting for the European title he fighting for Gary Mason you know he was in European and fighting in world class before you knew it with Lennox Lewis so he's an example of somebody who's pushed fairly quickly um, through the ranks but anyway so the reason why I kind of did this video tonight was to just introduce myself a bit more um, by trade you know if you do your, your, you do your, your research and some of you probably have done you'll know I do cricket as I do cricket coaching but um, boxing has been in my blood for years even when I, I, I had an illness called chronic fatigue syndrome six seven years put me out so that boxing basically came to him pretty quickly um, but I wanted to get back into the sport somewhere or the other um, and I sort of like had to remodel my life went into do cricket coaching along the way I bumped into a gentleman by the name of Steve Bunce while I was doing a cricket interview uh, at a pub I was going to meet my, at the, there, then my boss Steve Bunce walked into the, the pub and um, I think uh, James Tony had just beaten up Juroff I, I, said to Jen, I, t I said to Steve Bunce hey I told I, I had a funny feeling that um, uh, Tony would win because I knew Steve Bunce. I recognised Steve Bunce a lot because we see Steve, I see Steve Bunce a lot of time when I used to live in uh, Tamworth, which is where he's near Birmingham, where he used to live or reside. So I see him getting on off the train going into London, and coming back from London, and we talk a lot about boxing. Um, so yeah, um, so when I saw him in in London. And I was at his pub, I was like, what are you doing here? I said, oh, I've come to do, try and find Curtin and Lang and blah, 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 we talked and stuff. I didn't realise that boxing and cricket was going to be so closely connected. Um, I did cricket for a while and uh, I um, wanted to go back into boxing. I just felt I had something left to do. So I got my boxing tutor's licence and I did some work with a gentleman called Wayne Llewellyn and Julius Francis. And they set up something called Boxing Schools. Gave me the opportunity to go in schools and coach boxing technique, which was very good. Wayne Llewellyn's very good at getting the kids to, you know, non-contact, but get him throwing combination punching and stuff. The kids love it a lot. It's very good. I felt it was very good. I know a lot of schools didn't like it, but certainly there's a lot of schools that did like it. And we found that the kids were doing bleak tests and they found they had a lot more discipline in class. Um, and it was a way of, um, you know, keeping these, good, these guys engaged. Because we found that a lot of the guys... You know they don't want to be engaged in class and we use the sport with boxing as a way of keeping them kind of focused so it helped and it's done a lot and i'm sure i believe that out of that as well was the frank it became the frank bruno boxing academy i don't know what, what is it is of now and if anybody is still at that academy i'd love to hear from you and what, you, what you're up to now with it so yeah i helped set that up with wayne i was one of the coaches at the time and uh yep yeah, so i've always been a, a keen fan of boxing i've always loved boxing and although I still coach cricket, you know, when the big fights are on, I'm always there. And I said, well, you know what, I should start doing some prediction videos. Because, you know, I've got these feelings so I should start doing boxing videos. And, you know, uh, along my way, I bumped in, I've bumped into a few people. And there's one person in particular that has, uh, fun enough, been... I know a lot of people, it seems like Marmite. Uh, some people like him, some people dislike him. His name's Apollo James Jackson. You don't have to look very far on, uh, on the uh, YouTube to see Apollo James Jackson. You know, the one thing, regardless of what people may say about Apollo James Jackson, all these, a lot of these guys are criticising him and, and behind a camp, behind a, you know, 
a computer screen typing insults to him or or making funny comments about his dress sense or whatever. On part of James Jackson, give him credit. As far as I'm concerned, lots of kudos. He's done a lot of uh, great things. You know, for the age he is, a young lad has gone and gone across to America. He sparred with Kelly Pavlik. I don't know how many people who are sitting behind the screen would get off this, their backside and go to America and spar with Kelly Pavlik and Brandon Rios. Jackson's not claiming to be the greatest fighter since or sliced bread or anything like that. But he's gone over there. And he's done a bit of journalism over there. He's interviewed the likes of Joe Frazier, Oscar De La Hoya, you know, um, and a lot of other fighters. Um, come close to interview Mike Tyson, you know, and uh, inspire. It's, it's inspirational to see somebody like that getting off their ass. Yeah, you know, he could have been sitting at home, bunning to weed and, and, you know, and getting himself in trouble. But he's picked himself up, self-motivated and done well for himself. So you really can't knock the lad for that. You know, uh, we've all got opinions. You might not like me for my opinions. I might not like you with your opinions. But at the end of the day, you've got to give a man a credit where it's due. And for me, regardless of what his views may be, I don't agree with everything he says. He doesn't agree with everything I say. But bottom line is, you know what? Give a man credit where it's due. And uh, yeah, he's done, a, he's done a lot of good videos. And you know, it was his camera I was using um, recently to do a lot of the videos I've been doing. Um, a lot of the HD ones have gone to Fight Hype UK big up to Fight Hype UK thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be able to go and be a part of the Derek Chisora uh, uh, David Hay press conference um, so it's been great big up to you guys uh, I hope to do video, more videos for you guys in the future so yeah um, so that, that's it that's where I'm at um, I'm still doing some videos now boxing I do do predictions um, I try and be as honest as possible as you'll see, I've done some interviews um, with Colin Hart, um, John Rawling, Frank Warren, um, Francis Warren, Adam Booth. Adam Booth, the interview I did with Adam Booth, I tell you, I loved it. I mean, a battery ran out on one one camera and then I had to use my Blackberry in the end. So it was a bit ugh, naff and somebody suggested I need to get equipment. I'm going to get some equipment. Don't worry, I will. But you know, what, three days? You know, so I did the interview with Adam Booth and uh, Adam, if you're listening, um, it's 15, 15, 15 and a half stone I quoted it as, and you called me medium. You know what? Maybe you need to employ me. I wonder what the medium's going to say next. So, um, yeah, Adam accused me of being a medium for asking him or suggesting to him that David would come in between 15 and 15 and a half stone for the fight. I said he looked pretty light. And Adam said I, uh, yeah, I was a medium. Nice. Thanks, Adam. Um, yeah, I get it. He's a very nice guy, uh, Adam Booth. Um, very interesting character. Very, very interesting. And uh, he's some, he's somebody I'd love to interview again. Uh, Don Charles, Derek Chisora's trainer. Lovely man. I mean, really wicked. Down to earth guy and uh, very approachable. Um, spent a lot of time in the gym watching Derek train. And, you know, not just because Derek Chisora's in the gym, but mainly the relationship with Don Charles is pretty good. He's like a. Like an uncle to me, he's a he's a good man. He's got a lot of knowledge about the sport and about the game. Um, he says it like it is. And of course, there's Spencer Ferron. Spencer, I love you, man. Did a video with uh, Spencer Ferron from Hard Knocks for life. Uh, their train, their camp has got um, obviously Darren Hamilton. Big up to Darren Hamilton, new British uh, light welterweight champion, and uh, having beaten Ashley Thea Payne. So. Um, Pick up to you. Well done. Congratulations. Like mobile phones. Oh, it's, it's. right. So where was I? Yeah. So Spencer Ferron. I uh, was saying thank you for the interview. It was great. When you get a chance, please watch. Please watch my Spencer Ferron interview. Um, he just says it like it is. I'm really to hear what you guys think. What you guys think about it? Your views. Um, and the interview I did with um, Spencer from Darren Hamilton and there's another one I did oh yes with Don Charles I'd like to hear what you guys think about that um, and just before I just to finish this little bit off um, again thank you to everybody who's allowed me to interview them um, another shout out to iFilm London Coogan and James I hope you're watching my videos and uh do the right thing and follow me on Twitter. Guys, I'm following you on Twitter. You tell me you watch my videos. 
that you won't subscribe to me on Twitter. All right, well, I'll catch you guys again soon. And when I do, we'll talk. But it's great hang it was great hang around you guys as well. It's fantastic. Big fan of iFilm London. I think they're doing some wicked work. Um, always getting the uh, great angles and great video and so great stuff to them. Great stuff with them. And uh, just keep up the work, iFilm London. Of course, I've got to give a big up one shout out again to Hatman TV. Always giving out wicked uh, predictions and uh, just keeping it on the real. Love it, Hatman. Um, Wing Chun student, boxing historian, the list goes on and on and on and on. Um, Woody, uh, uh, Woody does all the um, things on ringside with Sky Sports. Great stuff to you. Uh, boxing guru for obvious reasons. Wicked stuff, man. Or oh, are you a woman? I'm not sure because I keep seeing a woman on the page. There's a woman on man. Okay. So um, that's it. So just a bit of like like a welcome video, a little bit more about me, a bit of waffling from me, and uh, just to say to everyone that's still doing the videos, keep going. And one final point: um, boxing journalism is, journalism is pretty difficult. It's very easy to sit down here and have the pleasure of watching these videos come to us. How they get to us is another matter altogether. And I um, was inspired, as I said, by Apollo James Jackson, and I now can speak from some experience picking myself up okay after criticizing others I think I can do a better job picking myself up and get myself in, op uh, in a position to start blogging and in a position to go further and to start doing some reporting so I've, I have done it and um, it's difficult as you'll see in one of the videos I've done I think it's David Hay live reporting David Hay you'll see I was so close to doing the interview with the Haymaker and you know you've got people like Sky Sports and ITV and BBC and you just keep going on epics from America Sky Sports Germany oh yeah big shout out to Caroline for Sky Sports Germany wicked uh, great personality and uh, she is a presenter for Sky Sports Germany you'll probably see my interview with her as well again fantastic great girl um, yeah she was the one who did the filming as well helped me do some film with my, my Blackberry phone so yeah, um, but yeah, it's very hard, very, very difficult because those guys, what you see is just the video afterwards, but you see them in two, they're arguing with one another, perhaps they're arguing Sky, arguing BBC, BBC arguing ITV, ITV arguing with the Associated Press, RTL arguing as well, and, and somebody chatting in German because they just want to get the opportunity to get that exclusive, to talk to their, to talk to their, uh, you know, get to talk to David Hay, for example, and you see them all arguing and fighting one another, oh, it's my turn next. You'd be surprised at like school kids in the yard. Really, it's just unreal. I didn't get the opportunity, but then, you know, I guess, uh, who knows? Um, you know, I uh, I did my best, but, um, you know, didn't get the opportunity. <laughs> I'm sure I'll catch David at some point to get an interview with him. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it was, it was, it's more difficult than it looks. Much more difficult than it looks. And... Uh, you know, I said I'm not an expert, but I, I tried. I tried to ask the questions that I felt that other fans would want to hear. Just straight up and ask them. You know, when I asked, I went, when I asked Frank Warren, I said to him, look, I know you're obviously going to support, say, Chisora's this and Chisora's that. You're his promoter. And they need to get him to back their points up as well. So that's why I enjoyed my interview with Booth. Because, um, you know, he doesn't like answering questions, as you know. And, uh, so hopefully I get another interview with Adam. I did enjoy it. And I'd like to go again and have an interview with him. And obviously, I'd like to get a second round with Spencer because he's called this fight between Chisora and Hay a mismatch. Um, it's not because um, somebody made a comment on my page, oh, you're obviously going for Chisora. I'm not obviously going for Chisora because I'm in his camp. I'm going for Chisora because I think he's the better fighter. I think he's got the better chin. Um, I think that he, you know, when he going gets tough, he's not going to go and crack. Um, I think David carries speed. But that speed didn't stop him getting tagged by Ruiz, didn't stop him getting dropped by Barrett, didn't stop him getting touched by Valuev, you know, um, didn't stop uh, Vladimir jabbing his head off. So, you know, and David says he's going to go out there and knock someone spectacularly out. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Tomorrow, all will be revealed. And, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm... Uh,
looking for Chisora to win the fight. As I've said, I think he's a better fighter. Um, and uh, okay, Amir Khan's fighting another one. I said before, I think Amir's going to get beat. I think Amir, I, I, my 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 prediction is Amir is going to get stopped late by Garcia or Garcia win on points. Um, I think Amir starts fast as he always does, and then come round six and seven starts to slow down. But he's got to be fair, he's got um, Ruben Tavares in his corner. So we're hoping that that helps and he's fitter and stronger and punching harder and Ruben Tavares can make a name for himself. Um, what would be quite funny is if uh, Amir Khan looks weaker coming into this fight after Ruben Tavares was saying that um, Ariza was on uh, using, Amir was using some sort of water diet. It was quite interesting. But we'll see. Right, well, don't forget to add, subscribe and leave your comments below. And also, one final thing. Please, somebody tell me. Please, somebody tell me. How do you get more hits on YouTube? There's anybody there like YouTube experts without paying for subs. Not paying for subs. You know, and then one thing else. I was thinking, maybe I could get three or four of these people like Hatman and Wing Chung Student and a few others together. And get them together and do like a once a month boxing monthly sort of reviews of fights and previews of fights you think that would work hmm all right just left you with that thought okay this is Bayloric TV I am out later